respected religious leaders, representatives, guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Today, with the blessings of different religions, we can have the valuable opportunity to hold this interfaith symposium at the University of Wales, Trinity St. David. This is extraordinarily meaningful. As everyone knows, since the establishment of St. David's College in 1822, the aim of the college has been to enhance the education of religious clergies. In more than 100 years, it has nurtured many outstanding clergy who have been making great contributions towards religious education. Religions are indispensable to human beings. Their importance is extraordinary. Dr. Arnold Joseph Toynbee, the famous 20th century philosopher of history, once said, Historically, religion came first and science grew out of religion. Science has never superseded religion. And it is my expectation that it never will supersede it. I do not believe that any human being has ever been without religion or ever can be. Looking at today's world, frequent chaos and disasters are everywhere. They have reached a level unseen previously in human history. How can we resolve conflicts so as to promote world peace and security? This is not only something that is imminently imperative, but it is also the common ideology and wish of all human beings. There is no better method than religion to accomplish this. More than 10 years ago, I met a retired religious leader who asked me if I could still anticipate peace in this world. I told him, if everyone could treat one another equally and live harmoniously, there would be peace in this world. That is, one country should treat another country equally one political party should treat another political party equally. One ethnic group should treat another ethnic group equally. One religion should treat another religion equally. It is difficult to establish harmony and equality among different countries, different political parties, different ethnic groups, and different religions. However, if we can start establishing harmony first among different religions, we can do it. Why? The core value of all religions is benevolence and universal love. Even though there are different religions in this world, the essence of all religions is love, benevolence, and compassion. As a result, different religions can work together. In what way can they unite? They can unite in love, sacred benevolence, and compassion. The Bible says, Love one another, just as I have loved you, you also must love one another. The Quran says, Allah is ever of pardoning, all-powerful. Sikh sacred texts say, more than all else do I cherish at heart that love 
which makes me to live a limitless life in this world. Baha'i sacred texts say those virtues that befit his dignity are forbearance, mercy, compassion, and loving kindness towards all the peoples and hindrances of the earth. Hindu sacred texts say, "May all beings regard me with the eye of a friend." May I regard all beings with the eye of a friend. With the eye of a friend, do we regard one another? Tao sacred texts say: Rescue those in difficulty, relieve those in distress, be compassionate towards the desolate, forgive the wrongs of others. Confucian teachings say: Love all beings, for we all live under the same sky and are supported by the same earth. In Buddhism. The Flower Adornment Sutra says, "All Buddhas, the thus come ones, take the mind of great compassion as their substance. Because of living beings, they develop great compassion. From great compassion, the Bodhi mind is born, and because of the Bodhi mind, they accomplish supreme, perfect enlightenment." The Flower Adornment Sutra emphasizes the importance of compassion. Compassion means sincere and selfless love. In Buddhism, in order to cultivate the Bodhi mind, one must begin with compassion. The Bodhi mind of Buddhas arises from great compassion. How can the hearts of great compassion be brought about? It comes from empathy for all living beings. When a Buddha sees living beings suffer in the cycle of life and death, he helps and saves them with equal and pure compassion. This is the true benevolent and compassionate mind manifested by the sages. How should religious people and clergy put their sacred, compassionate love into practice? In Japan, I once met a Christian pastor called Ishi, who was a university professor. When I was teaching in Japan, he invited me to participate in an interview at the TV station. The interview was broadcasted live. I answered more than ten of his questions. At the end, he asked me how different religions could tolerate one another. I told him, "The answer is that God loves the world, as is said in the Bible." How does God? Love the world. The love of God is abstract. Every clergy and religious adherent should demonstrate the love of God by putting it into practice in their daily life, in their work, and interpersonal relationships. They should love the world on behalf of God. In this way, there will be mutual tolerance among different religions. If they cannot love others on behalf of God, they are acting against God's will. Therefore, different religions must not praise themselves while defaming others. They must respect one another and praise one another. After hearing this, Pastor Ishii wholeheartedly agreed with me. Throughout the years. The reason why we believe that religions can be united with one another is because of the ideology of all the religions in the world are one family. In Henan Province in China, a stone tablet, which belonged to the time of Emperor Suzong of the Tang Dynasty, was unearthed. The tablet was called 
the image of harmony among the three religions and nine schools of thoughts. In this image are Shakyamuni Buddha with Lao Tzu and Confucius on either side. It illustrates the undivided relationship among Confucianism, Buddhism, and Taoism. That is, the three religions and the nine schools of thoughts are one family, and all things in the universe are one entity. In the same way, all religions are one family. Am I working to help unite different religions in Singapore and in Australia? I often use my hand as a metaphor to explain the relationship among different religions. At first glance, the five fingers look different. However, when we trace their roots, they all come from the palm. Following this analogy, if we study different religions intensively and go deeply into their scriptures and principles, we can understand their core values and discover that they have the same root. Religions confirm that there is only one true God in the universe. He is the creator of the universe and is so profoundly powerful that he can exist in innumerable forms. In the past, transportation was inconvenient, communication technology was not advanced, people do not have much interaction, and ways of life and cultures were different. As a result, this true God had to manifest in different forms in different regions in order to teach all living beings. In Christianity, he is called God. In Islam, he is called Allah. In ancient China, he was called Pangu, the one who opened up heaven and earth. In Buddhism, he is called the true in its nature. Actually, they are one. Today, technology is advanced and transportation is convenient. In this era, various religions should aim to come together rather than go their own ways. They should treat one another equally and get along harmoniously. Because the gods of different religions are actually the manifestation of the same true god, the teaching principles of different religions are more or less the same. If you look at the different religious scriptures closely, you will find that about 70 to 80 percent of the content are similar. Only a small part is different. The differences lie in the different living habits and different cultural backgrounds. However, on the whole, their goal is the same, as they encourage people to refrain from evil deeds and do good deeds. They teach ethics, morality, and causality. Therefore, each religion should praise the others instead of being arrogant and despising one another. Otherwise, opposition and conflicts will arise. Religious cohesion is not a vague idea. We have actually accomplished the idea. In 1999, we helped unite nine major religions in Singapore so that they could become one big family caring for one another. They have frequent interactions and take part in each other's important activities. They have achieved very good results and are highly praised by the Singaporean government. We have also held religious joint activities in Malaysia, Indonesia and Australia, which have been very successful. In 2006, the nine major religious leaders of Singapore held hands to pray for world peace in the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. This greatly moved the Director General of UNESCO, as well as the delegates and guests. Since 2002, 
we have been helping to unite various religions and races in Toowoomba, Australia. After more than 10 years, we have successfully helped Toowoomba towards becoming a model city of peace and harmony. In March of this year, UNESCO delegates and guests from nine countries visited Toowoomba to study and observe the results of religious and ethnic cooperation. They were so impressed by the result that they became more confident that there could be peace in the world. They commented that we are very impressed that the communities with multicultural background can live in harmony in Toowoomba. We see everyone always smiling in Toowoomba. You have done what we talk about. You are the example of what we preach. Religious activities should focus on education and different religions should learn from one another. How can the idea of world peace be achieved in reality? It has to be done through religious education and interreligious learning. Different religions should promote benevolence and universal love through education. This is the foundation of world peace. The record on the subject of education in the Book of Rights, the earliest educational monograph in China, says, Education is essential in building a country and in guiding its people. The teaching of Confucianism, Buddhism, Taoism, and traditional Chinese culture always start with education. In fact, the founders of various religions are great social educationalists. If we explain the word religion, zongjiao, using the Chinese definition, it will be most meaningful. The character zong means vital, important, and revered. The character jiao means education, teachings, and civilization. When combined, zong jiao means vital education, important teachings, and revered transformation of humanity. In the past 20 years, I have been advocating religious cohesion. People from different religions do agree and think the above definition of the word religion is excellent. Hence, various religions must explain the religious scriptures clearly so that their adherents can truly benefit from them. If we want to revive religions, we must focus on education and learn from the examples set by the founders. We must lecture and attend classes. In addition, religions must learn from one another. They should not only study their own scriptures, they should also study those of other religions aiming to find the similarities and accommodating the differences. They should have the same direction and the same goal to contribute to the security and peace of the world. When I was in Singapore, I studied the sacred text of different religions seriously and compiled a book called One Humanity, Many Faiths. In Singapore, I had been invited to talk on the Rosarian Virginis Marier at a Catholic school. I also spoke on the Quran. The Muslims were satisfied with my talk. In 2015, I made a proposal to select 360 essential excerpts from the scriptures of various religions. This was done and they were compiled into Scriptures 360. This can make it convenient for people of different religions to learn the teachings and principles found within each religion. 
This idea is strongly supported by religious leaders and adherents of various religious groups in Toowoomba, as well as Singapore, Hong Kong, and Malaysia. In November 2016, Scriptures 360 were published and were welcomed and praised by people of various religions. Now, with the help of Professor Medwin Hughes, the University of Wales Trinity St. David will establish a Harmony PhD program to which professors and students will be recommended by the leaders of various religions. Professors and students will be living and learning together. They will delve into their own religious principles as well as study the religious principles of other religions. Together, they will promote the religious spirit of benevolence and universal love. They will nurture successors for various religions and prepare teachers for the colleges and even for the religious universities in the future. This will be a great joy for the God of all religions. Following the sacred example of benevolence and no confrontation. In September this year, a World Peace Conference will be held at UNESCO. We will put forth the principle of no confrontation. If we choose competition, confrontation, and war, human beings will undergo endless suffering. If we choose to give up competition, confrontation, and war, people will enjoy endless good fortune. This is also advocated by the sages of various religions. By renouncing competition, human beings can turn the earth into a blissful paradise. In the Chinese history, there is a famous story which involves humility. The story happened during the reign of Emperor Kangxi of the Qing Dynasty. Zhang Ying was a high official in the imperial court who always behaved respectfully and cautiously. Once his family and their neighbor, the Wu family, had a confrontation because of the property line of their homes. Both families refused to give in. Even the local officials couldn't resolve the issue. As a result, the chief of the household staff of the Zhang family wrote a letter and sent it a thousand miles away to the capital city to report the issue to Zhang Ying. Zhang Ying replied to the family by using a poem which said, Your letter to me only concerns a war. Why can't we give them three feet? The great war, which extends 10,000 miles, still exists. However, Emperor Qin Shi Huang is nowhere to be seen. Therefore, the Zhang family took the initiative to move the wall back by three feet. When the Wu family saw that, they were deeply touched and also moved their wall back by three feet. Thus, a six-foot wide alley was created between the two families. This is how the six-foot alley came about. The humility of Zhang Yu manifested the virtue of benevolence from Confucianism. This coincides with the core principles of religious education, benevolence, and universal love. Religious people should take the lead to put the sacred spirit of benevolence and universal love into practice. They should renounce confrontation, advocate mutual deference, and open their hearts so as to create true harmony for human beings. I truly believe this is what Allah, God, and Buddha will be happy to see. We deeply believe that as long as various religions can treat one another equally and coexist peacefully, they can influence different races, different political parties, and different countries. Hence, world peace can be realized. This is the greatest contribution that religion can bring to human beings. 
I hope we can join hands and with one heart work towards the same goal. Last but not least, I sincerely wish prosperity, peace, and continuous harmony for the United Kingdom and for all the countries in the world. Thank you very much.